Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create your first database in Microsoft Access. As always with these video tutorials, before we get started, let's have a look and see what we're trying to achieve. This is a database for a sports club and you can see that there are a number of members of the club and we have details as to the grade sport that they play, whether or not they've paid their fees, how many years they've been a member and their date of birth. And you're going to learn how to create a database to store this kind of information. You're then going to learn how to query the database. So for example, you can have a look and find only those people in the database who play grade B of the particular sport. You'll also see how to create a form to make it easier to view the records in your database and also to add new people to the database. And finally, we'll have a look at creating a report that allows us to view the data from the database. So that's basically what we're going to do. So I'm just going to close that for now and let's relaunch Access to start Access much as you would start it if you were attempting this yourself. Now before we get started actually creating anything, let's have a look at the data. This is the data that's going into our database. And whenever you create a database, the first thing you need to do is to determine what you want out of it because that's going to, to a certain extent, determine how you put the information into it. In this case, I want to be able to send an email, for example, to Jim Southdown. I want to be able to say, good morning, Jim, or hello, Jim. So I don't want Jim and Southdown put in the same field because otherwise it would be very difficult to split it apart later on. It's much easier to have a field for first name and one for last name and stick them together when I want to have Jim Southdown appear as a single entity. Breaking things up is much harder than sticking them together. So basically, I'm going to create a database that has a first name and a last name, the grade that sport that this person plays, whether or not they've paid their fees, and that's going to be a special field called Boolean. I'm going to do that as a yes, no field, so you can enter it by clicking a checkbox, the number of years that they're a member, and their birth date. So let's just tuck this data away for now, and let's get started in Microsoft Access. So the first thing you're going to do when you're shown this screen when you launch Access is to click to create a blank desktop database. And you're going to give this a name. I'm just going to call mine Club. And I want to locate it somewhere on my hard drive. At the moment it's going into Users Helen Document. I prefer to put mine into a folder called My Data Sources. And I've just got a folder here called Data Sources, so I'm going to pop it in there and then click Create. And Microsoft Access dumps me in this sort of table view. It assumes that I want to go ahead and start adding some data to the database. But in actual fact, what I want to do is I actually want to set up my database a little more intelligently than that. So I'm going to click here on View and I want to go into Design View. To do that, I need to give my table a name. So I'm going to call this Members and just click OK. And now we're in Design View and here we can set up the database to be exactly what we want it to be. So I'm going to set up the fields and I actually don't want an ID field. If you don't want this ID field, just click on it and click to delete it. And it's gone. So my first field is going to be the first name field. Now, You'll get into trouble a little bit later on in Access if your field names have spaces and things in them. So I just jam everything together. So it's going to be a first name field and the kind of data it's going to have in it is text data. And it's going to take the first name. Now the description is not only optional but it can also be English so you can spell it nice and correctly obviously. Now down here I want to just lost that. Let's go back to first name field. Down here, I want to set the field size because 255 is a lot for a person's name. I think 20 is going to be more than adequate. And the other thing I'll do is a caption because what captions allow you to do is to give an English name to a field and 
Access is going to use that in preference to the word first name, but it does mean that whenever we want to use this field in calculations, we can still call it first name. So it gives us the benefit of having sensible field names for working in Access, but also have English words, so it's not going to look quite so sort of camel case. So I'm going to call this first name. So I've added a caption. So now I'm on to the second field, and that's going to be the person's last name. So let's just type in last name. It's also short text, and it's going to have the last name. And the field size, again, 255 is too big. I'm just going to do 20, and my caption is going to be last name. The next field is going to contain the grade cricket that they play, so let's just click in here and we'll call that grade, or grade of sport. Again, it's a text field and it's going to be grade played. And the field size can be really small for this because it's only A, B or C, but let's just sort of make five so it's got a little bit of breathing space. And the caption, grade played. The next field is going to be for the fees, and so I'm going to call it fees paid. Again, all one word. Now this is a special field type, and it's called Boolean or yes, no, because that allows us to then select yes, the fees are paid, or no, they're not. We're going to call this fees paid. And the caption, fees paid. And you can see that its format is a yes, no field. You could have it as true, false, or you could have it as on, off. It's sort of one of those fields that something might be true or false, yes or no, on or off. Yes and no is just fine for us. Now the next one is years a member. So we're just going to call that years a member. And this is going to be a numerical field because you can see that it's got numbers in it. So we're going to call it a number field. And down here we can set a field size. Now long integer is a huge number and we don't need it to be that long. So I'm just going to call it an integer field. That's a nice short field. And the caption is going to be years a member. Now for decimal places, we don't really want any decimal places because we just want whole years, so I'm going to do zero. And let's put in here years a member. Okay, and then the last field is going to be birth date. And it's a special field, it's going to be a date time field. So we're going to put in date time, and this is going to be birth date. And now let's go to Format, and we can click the drop-down list and select the format. I'm going to choose Medium Date because that has the month name spelled out in full, and we're just going to call this Birthday. And we're ready to finish up with our data table, or the structure of it. Now before we go, we need to specify a primary key, which is a field that contains unique data. We couldn't use last name because a couple of people share the same last name, but there's nobody here or no two people that share the same combination of first name and last name. So we'll make those our unique key. So I'm going to click in the column just to the left of first name and then shift click on last name. And that selects both these fields. And I'm going to click primary key and that selects these two fields as the primary key for the database. Now that we've done that, we can close this, save it, and we're ready to go and enter data into the database. Now occasionally you might find that Access puts in a field in there, the ID field. Again, if it does that for you, just go back into View and just go and remove the extra field. And then you can go ahead and save it and go back. Now I just did notice that I had a spelling error, so I'm just going to sort that out while I am here. And let's close this, save it, 
double click and we're ready to enter our data. Now I'm not going to enter everything, I'm just going to enter a couple so that you can see how it works and then I'll go ahead and enter the rest myself and we'll come back. So I'm just typing Jim and then I'm going to tab and type South down. The grade is A. Let's have a look at our data. Fees paid, yes I'm going to click on the fees paid. Years a member is three, so I'm just going to type three. Birthday, because this is a date field, we can actually select it here, but of course since we're in year 2013, that's going to take quite a while to do. So I'm just going to type it, so I'm going to type 12 slash 8 slash 1971. And then we can just make sure that the date is correct by reading it off so we've got the month being spelled out in full and that's correct. So now let's go and add the next person, Simon Amiot. B grade. Fees are paid, he's been a member for four years and his birth date is 2-24-1970. And because of that formatting we're seeing it now appearing in a spelled out way. Now I'm going to stop the video for now, go ahead and enter all this data into the table and come back and we'll do some more work on this once the data is entered. Now I've finished entering the data so we no longer need this diagram so I'm just going to close that down and we can start working on the data in our database. Now if you want to see things a little more clearly here you can at any stage just come in and just widen these columns if there's a reason that you need to do that. But now that we've got the data in we can look at some of the things that we can do with it. For example we can sort on order by a field. So we could sort into ascending order for example by last name and so now all the entries are sorted in last name order and we can do it in reverse and we can do it on first name field or we could do it on the player grade. So we have an ability to organize our data or view it in a different way just using the tools here that are on the home tab of the ribbon and we'll just click on a field and then just click on the sort and filter option that we want to use. Now we can also find information in our database so I'm going to click on find and let's go and find anybody who has in their fields here the name Amiot. So I'm just going to find what Amiot and click find next and here is the first person with a field that contains the word Amiot. When I click find next there is no further matching record so I can close this dialogue. Now we've only got a few people in our database but if you had hundreds or even thousands of people in a database these tools would be handy for organizing data and for finding data. You can also filter data so we could choose the filter option here and filter the database. Now at the moment we're on the last name field so because we had that selected the filter is operating on that field. Let's go into grade player and let's filter on that so that we see only the people who are playing A grade. I'm just going to select A and then click OK. And now the table has been shrunk down to show only the matching data. To turn my filter off I'm just going to toggle the filter and that will remove it. Now we could use that feature for example to find out the people who haven't paid their fees. To do that we click on the fees paid field and then click filter and we want to see only the people who haven't paid their fees so we'll put a check mark against no and click OK and here are the two people who haven't yet paid their fees. I'll click toggle filter again to remove the filter. So right now this has got you started creating a database in Access. 
In the next video in this series, we're going to have a look at writing queries and creating forms for our Access database, and then finally creating a report for the data in the database. But for now, you should be able to get up and running and create a table, enter the data into the table, and do some minor filtering, sorting, and finding of the data in your database table. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Consider subscribing to this YouTube channel if you liked the tutorial, and that way you'll be advised when new tutorials are released. Visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks, and tutorials on a range of applications, including, of course, Microsoft Access.